Hey everybody and welcome back to what is now the third episode in the series on Bill's GS1000. Um, really fantastic response from you guys and I guess the, the great thing about YouTube is that um, as a creator you're sitting here and you're, you know, I'm here mucking around with this bike um, working my way through it and a lot of the people that are watching this um, have a lot of knowledge. Uh, particularly on the specific bike model or, or, or techniques. And uh, thankfully, you're reaching out and you're tapping away on the keyboard and the level of engagement's been very good with this bike. So I want to encourage that. Please continue to do that. Um, I did mention in the um, channel update that I did recently, and if you missed that, that'll be up in the corner, popping out on a card as we speak. Um, yes, yeah, so I did a channel update and I did mention that um, Bill is a retired gentleman. So, uh, you know, he's, he's an, uh, an older guy in his 70s and um, what I want to try and do is, is deliver him a bike that, that he doesn't have to worry about. He can just get on it and ride it and it'll be reliable. What he's wanting me to do in terms of a brief is oh, I'll just get it running. You know, I think he made the joke to his wife that oh, if this doesn't work, I'll just put it on a trailer and you can tow me around Devonport and I'll make brum brum noises. He's, he's retired, the cash cows run dry, so he's going to be relying on his superannuation, his retirement fund. And I've promised him that every step of the way, I will consult him before we proceed. Um, so if it gets to a point where, you know, it's, it's digging too big a hole for the poor bloke, then we'll have to pull it up or, or compromise, whatever. But I don't know if I really want to do that. So what I think I'd like to do is allow the channel to partly fund this. Now Bill's going, you know, he's, 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 he brought this here with eyes wide open and he, and he understands that it's going to cost him some money. Uh, and the arrangement at the moment is that if it's going to cost money, let me know how much you need and we'll put that into your bank account. Um, so already... There's a little bit going on that's going to need some money. There's parts missing, like, for example, the, um, the, the twist grip assembly and right-hand handlebar, uh, the throttle cables, I need new brushes for the starter. You know, just, it's already starting to add up. So what I'd like to do is you know, put, put the call out to you guys. If you want to help support Bill, what I'll do for this series only, I'll put a PayPal link down into the description. And if you want to make a one-off donation, That'd be really, really great. And if you don't, you just want to sit back and be entertained, that's fine too. I, I'm not worried either way. But if you want to help Bill, I'll put a PayPal link if you want to make a one-off donation. Either that or you can get onto patreon.com and look up Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. The link's in the description and you can become a patron. And the other way you can help is with, with merch. So, you know, you can buy yourself a T-shirt or a mug or a hoodie or something like that. Um... And whatever profits that I get from any of that, any of the income streams to the channel, I'll put back into Bill's bike. Um, I think that that, you know, that would be a nice thing to do. Anyway, let's get on with it. Righto, so let's just do a quick recap. At the end of the last episode, we knew that we had low compression pretty well across the board, particularly on, on number three. Um, quite a few guys um, mentioned, you know, why don't you soak it in diesel and ATF or whatever and, um, and see if it all frees up. And I was kind of already way ahead of you on that one. I've, I've been doing it. I've got a jar here uh, with some diesel in it and I've been squirting it into the, uh, into the pots and giving it a good soak for the last few days, actually, for about a week. And uh, we're going to see whether or not that'll help free the rings up and maybe uh, allow us to get some more compression. But before we can even read that, we need to fix a starter motor. So this thing, whew, uh, somebody mentioned too that the battery was not uh, flat, uh, that the starter wasn't toast, the battery was flat. It's not the case. And I've, I've recharged the battery fully and same deal. So I pulled the thing apart again and the, the, the fact is that nothing's changed. These, these brushes are cactus. And you can see how badly worn they are. 
Um, this one here is worn at a, a really, really um, strange angle too because the tab was damaged in this and it's sort of caused it to come out of phase a bit and um, wear at a funny angle. But this, uh, the, positive, the positive one is worn very badly, insulation's broken down. Um, and you can see, well I hope you can see, see if we can throw a bit of light on the subject here. Uh, I'll just see what I can see. Um, failure analysis is arcing across these, this brush. It's all pitted and black and stained and uh, horrible because it hasn't been making, hasn't been making contact properly with the commutator. So the commutator checked out, okay, these are what they call a lap wound armature. Um, so all of these guys, you just need to check whether or not you've got continuity between them all. Um, and that checked out fine and that none are going to ground and that's okay. Bearings all right. The magnets um, are, are fine now that we've glued them in. Um, so yes, I need to get some new brushes, but and that, that seems a simple enough task. I'd, I got on, uh, online and started searching and I can find some on eBay um, in America but and they're only about 12 bucks or something for the pair but they want like $60 postage to Australia to get them here. So I'm sure there's a local supplier that can supply some 9 by 6 by 12 whatever they are, bloody brushes. Um, so I'm going to wait till Monday and I'll get on the dog and bone and I'll, I'll try the usual automotive suppliers in Australia and see if I can find something local. If not, I might have to raid the wreckers unless someone's got a set and they want to pop them in an envelope and mail them off to Australia for me. But, um, yeah, in order to get this to Cheech, we're going to need to replace these brushes. So uh, that's a job for the, uh, for the Never Never for, at this stage. Um, but there's plenty of other things that we can work through. Right, one of the other one of the other comments, um, or one of the other things that, that came under a bit of uh, scrutiny from you fellas too was whether or not I was measuring the um, the clearance under the valve correctly um, in terms of the position of the cam lobes and what question was what was the other one of the other questions I think was what was the clearances under the other valves I don't know I haven't re I haven't measured them yet we haven't we're not at the stage where I want to be re shimming. All I was trying to do was establish whether there was clearance underneath the valve so that I, was, um, I understood whether or not it was impacting the compression test. Uh, if I throw a bit of line on the subject here. Right, yeah. So, um, essentially a cam has a lobe, but it also has a base circle, um, which is here. And as long as you're measuring anywhere underneath that base circle, you should be able to get clearance. In fact, it can be as simple as let me just give this a bit of a, a bit of a light crank. Of course, now the the lobe is pressing down on the on the bucket in the shim, and on this particular side, because we're on the intake stroke, this particular side, uh, the base circle is uh, is underneath the is on top of the shim, and you should be able to just rotate the bucket, which I can. Um, just to sort of show you a little bit clearer, I guess. Uh, there's a they put a little gap in there. See, so yeah, I can I can rotate that. So that, I know that, that there is clearance under there, and we stick a shim under there, and we have clearance. So yes, I did. Uh, it's not my first radio. I I do know how to measure clearances under under valves, but all very good points, and that's why I want to that's why I want to make sure that. Um, that you continue to make con these constructive points because uh, I will miss something. I will bugger something up. So it's it's uh, it's good to have uh, you fellas help engage because as a, as I said, as a community, we'll uh, we'll try and get build a bike that can run. All right, enough of that waffle. Um, right now, what I wanted to start doing because we've got we've established that. Yeah, we've got we've got some compression, and and I think that if we can get those rings to free up, we'll probably end up with compression, and then um, we can start the engine up. 
run it up to temperature, get it through a heat cycle, cool back down again, and then have another look at it. And uh, we might we might have something uh, to work with. But in the meantime, we've actually got to get it to run. And stuff like this ain't helping. So let's get on with that. All righty, let's, uh, let's have a look here. So what we have here is uh, a bit of a mess. So somebody has decided at some stage for whatever reason, and there will be a reason, there's always a reason, uh, to take the power supply for the fuse block from this point here. Now, I'm not a massive fan, not that there's anything particularly wrong with that, uh, but starter motors pull a lot of current, and you know if you're um, going to get a voltage drop, that's where <laughs> you're going to get it when it's pulling a heap of current. So I would prefer to have that back to the battery terminal so we need to we'll fix that up i think uh, this here is odd and what they've done is they've taken the they've snipped the looks like they've snipped the red wire uh, to the regulator rectifier the regulator rectifier is caught up under is hidden up under here and they've taken it straight from this point two rather than from this wire so they this this is no it wouldn't be this wire that's direct from the battery of the fuse box this one is normally fused by this fuse here your main fuse uh, not protected by an aftermarket one that just adds electrical interference um, so we'll you know different bloody connectors and what have you so we'll get rid of that and we'll fix that up too like I said, there'll be a reason someone's done this. I don't know what it is, but um, I guess we'll find out. So what we need to establish is whether or not we've got power coming on, we've got to um, try and live up our, liven up our ignition circuit. So to break it down, motorcycles have a number of different circuits, and if you can isolate those out and work on one at a time, then you, you've got a better chance. All right. So let's just, uh, yeah, we've got, we got uh, juice, ding, nothing, 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 because they are not yet live with key. Nothing, nothing. So these are the ones out of the fuse block, by the looks of it. That's in, and that's out. Uh, this will be your main, main power feed up to said battery. Yep, so that's on all the time, uh, up to the key, I mean. So it goes, we know from last time that it goes red wire to key, orange wire back to fuse block. <laughs> yeah, make it hard for yourself, Andy. Let's get that bullet connector back together. Right, so we've got an orange wire here, uh, which will be, which means that the power, so the power will go up to the key with the red wire, and it'll come back via this orange wire, and then come back out of the fuse block again with these three wires. And the one that we're particularly interested in today is the orange and white wire. Let's see what we've got. Right now we should have nothing in there. And I turn on the key and we've got power coming back into these other three fuses. Right. So obviously comes in on that side, does it? Yep. So we've got, we've established that we've got power at the fuse box. And we should now have power to the orange and white wire. Hmm. Why have we got no power to the orange and white wire? That ain't good. Definitely haven't. Power that one, power that one, power that one. Oh, that's the power coming back from the key. That's one of the other circuits. And this one here, nothing.
Uh, we've got to dodge him a fight. Uh, let's pop the fuse box off and have a look. sort of size socket set. It's actually seven sixteenths. It's obviously a UNC bolt. And they use a nylock nut. Appears to be a contact problem. But the fuse is okay. Give the contacts a bit of a clean up and uh, see if that helps. Dirty contacts. All right, so now we have power into the orange and white wire from the fuse box into there. So now we just got to keep chasing it. Okie dokie, so it comes out of the fuse box through this rubber sleeve here, does an about face, routes back up under the frame, and the next place it makes an appearance is this rather questionable looking plug here. Uh, this is on its journey to the this is on its journey to the um, up to the handlebar. So we need to make sure that we've got juice in there. Which one's the orange and white? Looks like that one. Right. That'll be coming back. So that's that's okay. We've got um, we've got power there. So let's have a look at this thing. What's going on here? power there. So theoretically, oh let's not arc it out on the frame. So this must be the right hand handlebar switch as I suspected. So we've got turn the power back on. We've got power to here to the orange and white wire and we must need to send it back down this other wire which appears to be just plain orange. So 
So we should have power here. No. Oh, we got power there. What is that? Hmm. I need to strip this back so I can see what I'm dealing with here a bit more. Whoa! It's hot, it's hot, it's hot! Turn the key off. Dickhead. Or oh, just unplug it here. Yeah, it's definitely the orange wire that's getting the power feed. Looking at it. Uh, let's just open it up and have a better look. It's quite possible that the orange and white wire from there... Yeah, it's definitely orange and white. It must turn into an orange. I'm tipping. I'll have a quick look. I think I've got a, I think I've got a, um, a wiring diagram somewhere. I'll have a quick look. Yes, that is correct. So we obviously have power all the way here. So it's orange and white all the way to the to this plug, and then the power feed for the engine run switch and the um, the power for the engine run switch and for the starter as this guy is orange um, so yes it goes in orange through the switch and then back out as orange and white the other orange and white wire in this um, in this plug and that should then liven up the coils so we'll just check all of that uh, key is off key is off He is now on. We should have juice to orange wire. Yes, happy days. So if I bridge those, if I tie those together, we should then have um, power to our coils. And this is uh, a bit ugly. And then the key, that would be power to the starter solenoid. Let's make sure that's safe and we'll just test that as well. Yep, hear that? So we just, I'm sure what this is. Oh, they've done something dodgy my fired here. So that would need to go into the into the start button. That's out of the start button. That's into the engine run switch. That's out of the engine run switch. Hmm. Turn the key off. Let's have a better look at this. Now I wish I hadn't. Yep. Some freaky shit going on here. There's only one way to deal with this. We need to sni snip it all off and start again. Which is exactly what I think I'll do. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Alright, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do something really dodgy for now. That'll keep us. Uh, that'll keep us going. What I've got here is a. It's actually a hazard light switch. It's off. Uh, I bought a packet of. Three or four of these um, 
uh, my wife, I fitted one to her scooter. So it latches all these together. Um, so we can just pick any two wires we like and poke them in here and we should have um, a switch that we can use temporarily. Not sure what the bloody amperage rating is on it, but this is a 10 amp setup, so can't imagine it would be any more than that, really. All right, so now if we put the key to the on position, use our test light to the orange there, and we switch this. Right, so we've got power now for an engine run. Uh, and also, I guess we could um, you do a momentary for the starter solenoid. Right, so we now have power to our handlebar switch, which doesn't exist, and back again. So now we just need to just establish whether the back again is going to the coils um, and everything there is hunky-dory. So, next bit. Alright, so with our newly fitted ignition switch in the latch position, we'll test what the hell's that? We'll test the uh, power to the coils, so it should be the orange and White one, it'll be into the primary side of the coil, yes, and then uh, obviously it'll come out the other side. Um, it'll come out the other side once it's switched, and it's switched via a transistorized ignition. So we've got power there, we've got power there. Um, we just need to establish that we've got power to the igniter unit, which we'll do shortly, but before we do, actually, no, we'll do it now. This is the this is the igniter unit here, the transistorized ignition, and we should have we've got the orange wire here, so we should have yep we've got juice there right. Hey, excellent. All right, so we've established that we've got power to um, the engine run switch, which we've cobbled up. We've got power to when we turn this on, we've got power from there to the coils, to the primary side of the coils, and we also have power to our igniter unit. So now what we need to do is try and establish whether we've got spark. Now obviously it would be a lot easier with the starter motor winding it over. We can check them all, but um, we can establish if we've got any spark just by rotating it slowly. I think we'll try that. Try a bit of light on the subject. Right, this is uh, a reluctor and these are pulsar coils so essentially the reluctor is a magnet I'll just uh, wind him around somewhere there and if I grab something like this you'll be able to see that it is in fact a magnet and as it swings past these pulsar coils it induces a, vo a voltage and sends a pulse down to the igniter and it uses um, transistors or it's really like a Zener diode, I think, to switch that coil to ground. So rather than the points opening and um, causing the magnetic field to collapse, the magnetic field is caused to collapse uh, by this guy as it swings by and pulses. And as the magnetic field collapses, of course, it induces a, a current in the secondary coil winding, which is your high tension lead. So what we need to do is plug a sparkus plug in and see if we can get any sort of spark out of it. All right, so this is plug number three. I'm hoping that it'll be a sufficient enough earth just sitting it on there. Uh, Jesus thing. Now, 
question is, will you be able to see it if it does spark? All right, so. Goodness me. All right. Contact. We have power there. Uh, so as this swings past, it should spark there. Did you see that? Spark. Woohoo! We have spark. I don't know whether you can see that. But trust me when I tell you, we do have a spark. So, that established, let's try the other coil. So these are, uh, these coils, um, they're a, waste, they're a wasted spark ignition system. So one and four are tied together off the one coil and two and three are tied together off the one coil. And of course they're all, one and four and two and three aren't on the same firing um, stroke. So what will happen is um, it'll fire both cylinders at the same time and the one with the compression and the fuel in it will ignite. The other one is just a wasted spark. So by establishing that we've got spark on three, we know we'll also spark on one, unless the HT leads buggered or the, or the cap. Um, but we'll try and establish whether or not we've got the same thing on number four. Let's get all this business out of the way of the rotating mass. Right, let's try and sort of cram that in there. Yes. Yes, we have a spark. Okay, so, happy days, good news, we've got spark. So one of the elements, we need spark, we need air and fuel, and we need compression. So we're, uh, we're a third of the way there. All we need to do now is um, try and sort out that starter motor and um, retest the compression. I'll keep putting a bit of diesel in there and then we'll dump all the oil and we'll, we'll put fresh oil in it uh, and see if we can't get it to spin them a jig around. Once that's, um, once that's sort of sorted, then we'll get the carburetor, carburetors on there and we could end up with a running bike. Ooh, I hope so. Um, time will tell. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment and I'll catch you next time on Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Bye for now.